Hey everybody. Hello, hello, hello on this kind of overcast and rainy Thursday night here in Phoenix. It's kind of rare to have this kind of weather uh, in May, but we've got a little bit of a cloudy overcast, what I call Wisconsin-y looking sky tonight. So we are, I'm so, so excited to talk to you tonight about something that is near and dear to my heart. Um, so a lot of you know that I have had Alaskan Malamutes since I think my first one, um, first purebred dog was in 1991, but had a couple dogs even before that that were um, Malamute mixes and made me fall in love with this Arctic breed. And so over the years, I have unfortunately had a lot of dogs that have had some health issues. And so my passion has become helping my animals. And through that time, I've lost several generations of dogs to Lou Gehrig's disease, kind of ALS, right? Um, in, in dogs, that's called degenerative myelopathy. I've lost dogs to uterine infections. I've lost dogs to cancer like, like that. Uh, and unfortunately, even lost a couple dogs to an anaphylactic reaction to what we have here in Arizona called Sonora River Toads. River toads. And it, it broke my heart. And so for the last almost 12 years, I've been doing a lot to study about animal health issues and recently started with this company that is making a huge, like massive impact, not only in the canine world for dogs, but especially in the equine world for horses. And it makes my heart happy. But I wanted to come on and share something with you that I found in my research that I had zero clue about. So a lot of us give our dogs, um, they may have arthritis, so we give them Rimadyl, right? It's kind of like a, an NSAID, like ibuprofen. Well, in dogs, it's called carprofen or Rimadyl. Um, some of us give our horses Butte. I, almost everybody I know that has horses, they keep Butte kind of sitting in their barn. It's basically like taking an aspirin for a human, right? It's their, it's their NSAID. Um, there's another product that, that you guys may remember in humans. It was called Vioxx that people use for arthritis. Well, there's equine and canine versions of those called Equiox that comes in, a, in an ingestible product. There's one that's a paste. There's one that's an injectable into a joint. And then there's Prevacox that we give our dogs. And so I wanted to come on and talk to you about some of these because I never knew that the FDA does almost no testing on these products. And so we're giving our horses and our dogs these products that we think are safe for long-term use. And I have yet to find a study that is over six months or a year testing for the long-term potential damage to our dogs and horses. And in humans, they spend tens of thousands of hours and millions of dollars studying these products. And I just assumed, like, I mean, you would think with my law school education, I would have realized that the FDA process for horses and dogs is different. It is massively different, right? But I didn't know that. And so in horses and dogs, sometimes the study, it's one study that they do for 10 days and they don't study the complications. So think about that we have animals that we're giving drugs to for months and years to help control their arthritis, to help control their chronic pain. And man, like nothing's more important than giving dogs quality of life or giving horses quality of life. So I totally, totally get that. But how many of you knew that they weren't studied for long-term use? So let me give you a couple of examples that blew my mind, just like blew my mind. So a lot of people, like I said, butte, um, big, big, big thing in everybody's tack for, for their horses. So it's, it's kind of everybody's go-to, like we as humans take aspirin, right? Butte, it causes problems with ulcers and most people in the horse world know that, but it also can inhibit a horse's ability to use the antibiotics like penicillin. It depresses bone healing. So if your horse has an injury to their bone and you're giving them butte to help with the pain, it's going to slow their healing of their bone. It impacts their T4 and free T4 levels for thyroid issues, right? Their hormonal metabolic system. So many different things it impacts in addition to obviously your liver and kidney function. That's with Butte. Now, there's a whole big product that's been on the market for about five years now. Um, it, it's children and osphos. You may recognize those names or biphosphonates. You may have parents, senior citizen grandparents or great grandparents that are using biphosphonates for osteoporosis. They studied these drugs in 80-year-olds and 70-year-old senior citizen humans. <laughs> humans. They were put on the market back in 2014 by the FDA for horses. And they never tested them in young horses. They never tested them for long-term use. They only tested them. Listen to this. One, one study by talking to some vets who had given this given biphosphonates to their to the horses in their in their practices. One study. 
not even a double blind. They didn't study any of the long-term implications. And then think about this. Think about the difference between an 80-year-old's bones and the bones of a two-year-old horse that's galloping around the track and the band they're putting on their growing bodies. So what they're finding is, is vets, renowned orthopedic, equine orthopedic surgeons like, like Larry Bramlage, like Susan Stover, like Patty Hogan, they're saying since, since this product came out, they're seeing a change in the bones health of the thoroughbreds that they're seeing in their practice. And, you know, people are using it off label. They're using it on two year olds, even though it's never been tested on two year olds, but it's never been tested for long term use either. Whether your horse is two or 22, they've never shown the impact on your horse's bone health. And so ask your vet, make sure you know when you have a drug that you're going to be giving your horse, how has it been used? How has it been studied? They can go to pubmed.gov, the US government's website, and check it out. But there's another drug that I want to talk to you about because this one's near and dear to my heart because it made a big difference in my quality of life for a lot of years. It's Viox. So some of you have, may have mentioned or heard about this back uh, about 10 years ago, almost 15 years ago now. Viox was used for arthritis pain, chronic arthritis pain. It's what's called a COX-2 inhibitor, right? Don't worry about that term, but just it Viox, ends in two X's, like Celebrex. My knee, I blew out my knee in 1990. You know, I've got six knee surgeries, two major ankle reconstructions. I'm like an arthritic mess. And so my orthopedic surgeon put me on these and they helped, honestly, they helped a ton. But then there were some studies coming out founding that Merck, the company that manufactured them, had hidden results and that it was actually causing heart attacks and strokes and ruptured aortas, ruptured aortic aneurysms, right? And so Merck was, took it off the market in 2006. They couldn't give it to Viox. They couldn't give it to humans anymore. And even when it was still on the market, they said, you've got to be young and healthy. You shouldn't have any of these other risk factors. And then Merck paid out, check this out, over $4 billion to people who had had heart attacks and strokes. And over 850 million, I'm sorry, 4 billion people that had had heart attacks and aortic aneurysms. And then another 850 million to people that had had strokes. They knew they had a problem and they had some studies that they had hidden. They brought this product onto the market and they had hidden these studies from the people at the FDA. And so it came off the market in 2006 or 2004, excuse me. And then guess what happened in 2006? Funny, but a COX-2 inhibitor called Prevacox came out for dogs and they never studied the vascular health issues ever, ever, not once. And the studies that you can find on dogs for this COX-2 inhibitor called Prevacox in dogs, and it's called Equiox in horse, same exact drug. There's only 81 studies, and almost all of them relate to whether it helps with arthritis and whether it causes gastric ulcers, right? Here's the problem. The longest studies they had, like the one in horses was 14 days. One of them in dogs was 10 days. Another one was 42 days in dogs. So we are using Prevacox and Equiox on our horses and our dogs for months and years. And I look, I, again, I had massive results from Viox, so I get how important it is to have a quality of life that's changed. But what I also know is that one of my best friends lost a seven and a half year old Malamute to a heart attack when she was laying there sleeping. Why, they don't know. But she was using a COX-2 inhibitor. What I know is that there are horses like Pioneer of the Nile that have aortic aneurysms or the sire of the last triple crown winner before him, Scat Daddy, they both died of ruptured aortic aneurysms, right? That's when the aorta, think about the aorta of a horse, it's like a garden hose, right? And so it needs to be loose and elastic because when a horse is exercising massive, massive demands on a horse's body, way different than we do as humans especially thoroughbreds, especially a horse covering a mare, any of our equine athletes, they're putting huge demands on their hearts and they need their vascular system to be elastic and pliable. And what we know is that COX-2 inhibitors in humans, that they cause hardening of those arteries. So that vascular system that you need to be elastic to be able to handle that big demand that a horse puts on it, it's, it's hardening. Now, there's never been a study ever, not once, about the impact of COX-2 inhibitors on the vascular system of horses, not even in a breed like Frisian that is more predisposed to having ruptured aortic aneurysms. And when you're, you have an aortic aneurysm, your horse dies almost instantly, and there's almost nothing you can do about it. 
So I don't know if there is a correlation. I don't know if it causes hardening in horses. I don't know if Equioc injectables are different than the oral supplements. I don't know if the paste that you give once a month is different than an oral supplement like Prevacox that you would give your dogs. But I know a lot of horse people that are giving Prevacox to their horses because it's cheaper. Here's what I know is that the year after they took Vioxx off the market, after they had spent billions of dollars marketing it, the year after they paid $5 billion, $5 billion in settlements, they brought Prevacox onto the market for dogs with one 10-day study. And then they had a 42-day study right after that. And it never studied vascular health. Here's what I know is they brought Equiox onto the market the year after that. And they never had a study about the impact on horses and their vascular health. Even though we know that equine athletes put more of a demand on their cardiovascular system than probably any other athlete. So I don't know the answers to these. I just know that it's important to ask the questions. And I've talked to a lot of horse people over the last week. This is Derby week, right? And, and so the news of Scat Daddy's death a couple years ago and Pioneer of the Nile's death, that was the sire of American Pharaoh. And he died at 13. His lifespan should have been 30. So if you've got a dog that's using Rimadil or if you've got a horse that's, or a dog using Prevacox, Carprofen, right, is Rimadil. If you have horses using Prevacox or Equiox in any of the forms, make sure you talk to your vets. Make sure you ask them about the risks. Make sure you check out the cardiovascular health of your animals because we know, we know, we know it improves their quality of life. It gives them significant relief. I loved Vioxx. I loved Celebrex until I found Nerve 2 activation because even as much relief as I got from Vioxx, I get more relief now from my Nerve 2 activator. And the way it works, I love it because it goes into my body and it turns on God's pharmacy inside my body. It turns on the drugs that my body has been making for tens of thousands of years in humans. And it does the same thing in horses and it does the same thing in dogs. And we're seeing massive, massive, massive impact for any, any animals, any mammals that have oxidative stress and inflammation. I can tell you with my knee injury, and those six knee surgeries and the two ankle reconstructions on my right ankle and needing ankle reconstruction on my left and needing a bone fused on my left leg that I was walking up to my aunt's house about two months ago and one of my cousins hadn't seen me in a while and she said, you're not limping anymore. I never knew I had been limping, right? I, I knew it was bad, but I didn't realize it was that noticeable. And so I've got massive, massive relief from being nerve two activated. The inflammation in my body is different. And what I know is if I can give my dogs or we can give our horses something that's going to turn on God's pharmacy inside their body, that's something I'm willing to give a try to because what I know is God tested it for tens of thousands of years in our body and the FDA may have tested it for 10 days. So which would you rather try? Would you rather try something that God tested for 10 to thousands of years or something the FDA tested for 10? Because I know for me, sometimes those drugs are necessary. They're absolutely necessary and you need to make those decisions with your vets. But I also know is that I'd rather try not to use pharmaceutical drugs if I don't have to and try to let my body heal itself. So that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. Make sure you talk to your vets, your equine vets. I've actually posted in a prior post the studies related to Equiox and Prevacox. Um, make sure you talk to them about it because there's a huge ad campaign, huge ad campaign. And Susan, Susan Stover, one of the biggest equine vets in the world, one of the most respected equine vets, she says, look, the marketing campaign that hits the horse world, it's amazing. And it's the new thing. It's the new trend and everybody starts using it. And that's what happened with biphosphonates like children and osphos. And Susan Stover, Larry Bramlage, Patty Hogan are all saying they're seeing injuries in bones of horses now that Larry Bramwich hasn't seen in 40 years, that Patty Hogan hasn't seen in 20 years. And the, the healing in the bones and the horses that are dying, they believe some of those injuries are linked to children and osphos, those biphosphonates that were never tested. One study, one study is all that was in the market for them. So ask your vet, tell him there's no long-term studies, ask him if there's something else you can do, but you know what? Try a Nerf 2 activator, because for me, it's been life-changing. And I think it'd make a huge, huge difference. And we've got so many horses and so many dogs whose quality of life has been changed by being Nerf 2 activated. And it's 
wonderful because it's not something from outside our bodies. It's turning on our body's own pharmacy, God's pharmacy. So anyway, I wanted to share that information with you. Take that information to your vets. Y'all have a really, really wonderful night. The Kentucky Derby is Saturday. So feel so bad for Omaha Beach that he was scratched and he can't run, but it's probably gonna make it a little bit more competitive derby. Um, drop in the comments who you've chosen in the derby. If you've got a pick, uh, man, it's gonna be a really fun race. So I will see you hopefully on Saturday. We'll come live talking about some of the horses uh, that are running in the Derby and in the Kentucky Oaks tomorrow, which is the Phillies. Can't wait to see that race. Thank you everybody for joining me tonight. Hope everybody has a really, really wonderful evening. Talk to you later.